Hello Year 9, I hope you're enjoying your studies in The Tempest. It's a great play, isn't it? Full of really interesting themes and fascinating characters. One of the most interesting themes, I think, in The Tempest is this idea of magic. We know that Prospero is a magician and he has magical powers that can affect the other characters and therefore which can create a story for Shakespeare to explore lots of other themes too. Before we uh, get into today's lesson, I'd like you to uh, have a look at this clip, please. It's a clip uh, from Britain's Got Talent from a couple of years ago. I just want you to watch um, the YouTube clip to about six minutes. OK, that was interesting, wasn't it? Um, just have a moment to think uh, to yourself, just two minutes to think about these questions here. And of course, you can pause the video at any point to give you time to carry out these activities. So firstly, how on earth do you think this performer has done this trick? And secondly, think about his definition of magic. OK, let's move on then. So this has given us lots of questions to think about, hasn't it? Uh, you can see quite a few questions on your screen now. I'd like you just to uh, pause the film for five minutes and just think about some of these questions and make some notes on your thoughts. You don't have to make notes on every one of them, just on some of them, and therefore gathering together your ideas about what magic is, how you, do, you would define it, whether you believe it, why we still talk about it, and what its function is in society and stories. You probably found there were quite a lot of stories with magic in, of course, Harry Potter immediately comes to mind, but it's in lots of films as well, isn't it? So the next question then is, do you believe in it? Magic was very much a part of everyday life in Elizabethan and Jacobean England. Those are the times, of course, when Shakespeare was living and writing. Elizabethan refers to Queen Elizabeth, and Jacobean refers to King James. Why do you think this was the case? Why did people believe or engage with these ideas more in the past? And finally, why don't we seek out magicians these days to help us with our problems? Just think about your responses to those questions, please. OK, so magic in Shakespeare then. You're going to see some instances now of magic in the works of Shakespeare. I'd like you to read them and think about them. I'd like you to annotate and underline anything that you think is interesting. And whilst you're doing that, I'd like you to think, why does Shakespeare use magic so much in his plots? The first one is from A Midsummer Night's Dream. So read the summary, read your key quote, and just take three minutes exploring the language there and the ideas. Think now about Macbeth. Macbeth is a very famous play and it's one that you will study in year 10 because it will be part of your GCSE. Have a think about the summary here, read the extract and annotate anything you find interesting in terms of magic. OK, we're going to return then to The Tempest. We've seen now how Shakespeare uses magic and we're quite, quite sort of well informed about why he might use it as well. So just watch and read the scene from the play. You can follow the link there to the Royal Shakespeare Company. This involves Prospero and his spirit slave, a Ariel. Prospero receives a report from Ariel about the spell he has cast on the ship. That is the tempest, isn't it? That's created this big storm that's shipwrecked this passing boat. Ariel, who was tasked with carrying it out, comes at his master's bidding to recount what has happened. So what I'd like you to do is like to watch this video clip and read along with the script on the next slide, please. You can see there that each line is uh, numbered to help you read along. And when you've finished reading it, please, I'd like you to make notes, underline and highlight as you watch. But also I'd like you to think about these questions here. Why is this an important scene in the play? What do we find out and what does it tell us about the characters? You can Pause the film to watch the clip and to read through your script. Take 10 minutes to do that, please. OK, so now we've seen this really important scene from the play. We're going to think about producing a little text transformation of our own. Now, we don't hear directly what Prospero's orders were, 
for what his magic spell sounded like, but we get a sense of what he wanted to happen from Ariel's list of things that he did. That's what he refers to as his master's bidding. What I'd like you to do now is, using the witch's spell from Macbeth, See if you can transform Ariel's speech into a spell that might have been uttered by Prospero. To do this, you might want to focus on lines 10 to 21 on the scene from the play. Which bits are you going to keep and which bits would you leave out? Can you apply a strong rhythm to it, just like we saw in the Macbeth example? So using the Macbeth example and thinking about structure, thinking about rhyme, thinking about rhythm, can you turn Ariel's words into a spell that might have been uttered by Prospero? OK, I hope you really enjoyed that. It's a lovely activity for you to start thinking about rhythm and words and sound play there. OK, if you've finished in time and you've got a bit of time left over, there is an extension task for you. There are two questions here to end on. I just want you to choose one and to answer it with one paragraph. How does the island setting enhance the impact of magic? Or, thinking about the extracts you've read, how does Shakespeare use magic to link to power and fear of outsiders in these extracts? I hope you've enjoyed exploring this theme of magic. Thank you very much.